Namaste. Namaste and welcome to this short video practice. Today we're looking at different variations of the forearm plank. Um, so I'm going to take you through a few. We've done these this week in class. Uh, so I just wanted a short video to share with you some different variations, some of the ones we did in class and maybe one or two that we haven't. Um, but all of these are on the forearms. So if you prefer to be on your hands and, and your wrists instead, you absolutely can be. The forearm plank is just a little bit more challenging than the one on the arms, uh, on the hands rather. So we're going to, uh, if you aren't warmed up, you could do this practice without being warmed up, but it's probably better to do a little Katishak Rasna or a few cat cows to begin with. And I've got a block here, which I'll put to one side for now, but might be handy later on. So our first plank will be the very basic knee plank. Um, and this is just to gauge where you're at and we can build each child, each variation will be more and more challenging. Um, and so go to wherever you feel comfortable and uh, ready to go to today. For the forearm plank, we're going to put our elbows down on the floor about where our hands would be if we were on hands and knees, maybe just slightly inside shoulder width apart. And you can have your hands in different positions. So you can have your palms facing each other, palms together, like as if you were saying namaste. You can interlace your hands, just tucking the bottom finger inside the palm of the hands. So you don't rest into that little finger. Or you can turn your palms towards the floor or you can turn your palms up towards the ceiling and there might be other variations that you know of. So for now, I'm just gonna have my palms together and my knees are directly underneath where my hips would be if I was in hands and knees. And this is our first variation. So here you're pressing down into the forearms, trying to keep as much space between your body and the floor as possible whilst engaging the belly muscles and then pressing down with the tops of the feet. So you get this sense of lifting the whole body. It's very active. The belly muscles are engaged and you can hold this and just see if you can move your knees a little bit further away from your elbows. And if you can, and that feels okay, you can see if you can move your knees a little bit further away. And if you can move your knees a little bit further away, can you bring your shoulders a little bit more forward? Can you tuck your tailbone under and create a little bit of a longer line in the back of the body? So less sticking out of the bottom, more tucking under. And still keep that effort to press the mat away from you. Use the belly muscles, use the buttocks, use the feet pressing into the floor. And when you're ready, taking a little rest, it's quite nice to come off the elbows and into child's pose. You might like to do this with your knees together or knees apart, whichever child's pose feels good to you. Just to relax the shoulders and relax the effort across the belly and the buttocks and the face. Give yourself a breath or two. And then come back into a kneeling position, upright position of your choice. So this is quite a good exercise to see just how ready you are to do some of the more advancing variations or challenging variations, I should say. So perhaps this time choosing a different position of your hands as you put your forearms down, maybe this time interlacing the fingers, just tucking the bottom finger in. And again, taking the knees back a little bit. Knees can be hip width apart or wider if you prefer. And then just seeing if you can draw your shoulders forward and tuck your tailbone under, scoop the belly in, press the hands and the forearms into the mat. If you feel there you've got a bit more room, you can take your knees a bit further back, pressing your feet into the floor. And the idea is that we get a straight line from the knees to the crown of the head. And we really need to push the shoulder blades apart from each other to press the hands down and the forearms down into the floor. Scoop the belly in, firm across the belly, the buttocks, the feet into the floor, firm across the upper back. Just a couple of deep breaths. And then when you're ready, again, coming back into your child's pose, or if you prefer, you can lie flat, make a pillow out of your hands and rest the forehead on the back of the hands. Either of these positions will allow your shoulders to soften, the belly muscles and buttocks to relax, 
And if you are in child's pose or lying on the floor, you can wiggle your hips from side to side, just to gently release any effort in the body. When you're ready, coming back to an upright position, and remembering that if you need to do more to release or to rest for longer between uh, variations, please feel free. Um, so you might have found that position of the hands a little bit more stable, or you might not have enjoyed it as much. Please feel free to use one of the other variations. I'm gonna alternate my hands every time. The other thing is if you find that as you hold, your elbows begin to inch apart, you might use a block between your elbows just to squeeze and keep that. Um, it's really not a hard squeeze. It's just a small amount of effort to keep the elbows moving towards each other. And what that helps to do, if you put your arms in front of you like this and you let your elbows come out, but try and keep your hands where they are and then draw your elbows in, you will feel the effect across the outside of the body, the outside of the arms, maybe outside of the upper back, maybe underneath uh, in the rib cage as well, maybe across the chest. Just that action of drawing the elbows towards each other whilst keeping the elbows bent really engages, particularly through uh, the supportive structures of the arms and shoulders. So let's try this variation with a block for those who would like to. So you come down to placing your elbows either side of your block, and this time we can turn the palms to face downwards, if that feels good. The knees are still down on the floor here, and we're moving the knees back to the point where perhaps we're almost straight when we tuck the tailbone under, still pressing into the elbows and the palms of the hands. You can have a different handhold if you would like. And then here, if you feel strong and stable here, you can tuck your toes and just straighten your legs so that you're holding a plank with the knees off the floor. You don't have to do that. You can keep the knees down if you like, or you can lightly touch the knees down and raise the knees again if you prefer. Still creating space underneath the body, nice and firm through the center. And then when you're ready, resting in your child's pose, moving your block out of the way or resting forward onto your belly, taking a couple of deep breaths. Relaxing the effort that you've made, particularly across the arms and shoulders, making sure the back of the neck feels loosened and relaxed. And when you're ready, coming up to an upright position. So if you find the block useful, please continue to use it. If you find that it's not useful yet, but maybe it is in a more challenging variation, you can but pop it in when you need it. If you need to, giving your shoulders a little wriggle, your head a little wriggle as well, just making sure you're not taking effort from one practice into the next. You get nice and loose in between. And that's the key thing really to, to maintaining a, a practice and making sure that your practice is serving you as well. So if you're practicing with your knees off the floor, I'm going to show you a variation where we move a little bit across the legs. We're going to do two different variations in this one practice that we do this time. But if you are more comfortable with your knees down, you can stay with the knees down and just continue to build up your strength in your plank pose over time. Daily practice of plank pose is really, really useful for this. And a lot happens in a short amount of time with daily practice. So now we're going to take the forearms to the floor. I'm going to turn my palms up this time and take my legs back into plank. You can go from your knees or simply step your feet back. We want to press the arms into the mat away from us. Palms up is slightly more challenging than palms down or palms facing each other. And really firm the belly and the buttocks. Maybe think about lengthening the back of the neck. And then we're just going to soften one knee down to the mat and then the other. So just like walking a dog, but instead you're in plank pose, we want to make that movement as much as possible just from the leg. So it's okay to start with a little bounce like I did, but then firming the center of the body, firming the upper body, and just moving the legs. I said we were gonna do two variations here. This is quite toughy. Um, <laughs> So when you're ready, coming back to center, just nice and firm everywhere, and then moving your weight forwards and backwards. So you're pressing off your toes to move your shoulders forwards and backwards, 
still firm in the center, just a rocking over the toes, still lifting through the body. And when you're ready, resting down and resting down all the way flat or resting in the pose of a child as you choose, turning the toes in and heels out if you're on the belly. Letting go of all of the effort from across the shoulders and arms and face, the belly, buttocks and legs. Maybe wiggle your hips from side to side, doesn't matter which pose you're in, if that feels like a nice thing to do. Whenever you're ready, coming back to an upright position. So those two are really quite challenging. <laughs> I hadn't realized that it would be quite so challenging to do both together because in class we did them separately, but not to worry. Um, so the longer we spend holding the plank, the more effective it is and the stronger we get and the more able we become. Uh, and so it's quite useful to do little things that help us to hold for longer. And that's basically what all the variations are for. You could just hold the plank strong and steady, but some of your muscles would get very used to that. And by moving your weight around, you actually engage different parts of the body. You help to create a, a, a more balanced sense of strength. So we've done all the different hand variations. So now choose whichever hand variation you like the best. Um, and we will come to do a little one-legged plank. So again, this can be done with knees down. You can do it with knees down. You just take the one leg off the floor and then the other. Um, but if you can, doing it with the knees off the floor. Coming to bring yourself elbows on the floor, palms or hands in whatever position works for you, stepping the knees back and or tucking the toes under and lifting the knees. We're going to press into the forearms Try to create that length, a little gentle tuck under, a scoop in of the belly. And then we want to just step the feet a little bit closer together, really feel the strength in the legs and simply point the right toes back and then see if you can lift the right foot a touch off the floor. So it would be, if you tucked your toes under, extended through your heel, your toes would be down. But as you're pointing your foot, the toes are up, the leg is floating off the floor. It's pretty much the same height off the floor as the left leg. Nice and firm in the belly. And then placing that foot down, just re-establishing your center. Nice and lifted everywhere. And then pointing the left toes back, floating the left foot up, keeping that strong sense of space underneath the body. Nice deep breaths, releasing down the left toes and taking a child's pose. Or lying flat on your belly. Whichever of these feels like the right thing to do. Sighing out through your mouth if you would like to. Whenever you're ready, coming up into an upright position. And I hope you're enjoying these. We've got a couple more to do before we are done. So of course, at any stage, you can bug out, you can take a rest, you can uh, come back to this practice when you feel that you've established enough strength to be holding these other variations. Don't be disheartened if you can't do it all the first time. Remember that yoga is a journey and practice is part of the process. So perfection isn't necessarily part of the process. Um, so we're going to do a variation now where we come to moving from, uh, from dolphin to plank. It's a really nice variation to try. It helps us to, again, relieve the boredom of just simply holding, and it also helps us to move the strength required up and down the body. So we're actually gonna start in dolphin pose. You might want to cross your arms at the elbows to establish the right position. Take the hand hold that you prefer, and then lift your hips up and extend through the backs of the legs and the heels. We want to make sure that the elbows stay inside shoulder width apart, but we want to step the feet a little bit further back. So the V that we make with our bottom in uh, dolphin is quite low. It's quite an obtuse angle. So we're scooping the belly in, extending into the heels, and then we're just going to draw the shoulders forward and the hips down, tucking the tailbone under, 
pressing the mat away to create a long plank pose and then pressing through the forearms, lifting the heels, lifting the hips, sorry, taking the heels down to come into our dolphin pose. So dolphining forward and back. And those of you who are familiar with dolphin will realize this is the dolphin. It just happens to hit the plank every time. So you can do as many of these as feels comfortable. I'd aim for five your first time. If five is too many, aim for three. Aim for 10 over time. And, or more if you prefer. Whenever you're ready, you can come down to lie flat on your belly, making a pillow out of your hands, toes towards each other, heels apart, give the hips a little rock and roll if it feels good. Maybe just take a couple of deep breaths. Soften as much effort as you can. And then when you're ready, coming to an upright position. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be able to release the effort between practices so that you just feel so much more energized at the end rather than compounding uh, tension on top of tension on top of tension, which is a way to discomfort. So we're going to practice our last variation. Well, there are really two more. <laughs> <laughs> it's always this way when I make videos. So uh, the next variation is dipping the hips as we're in our plank pose. So we're going to come into plank pose, whatever handhold works for you. And you can do this from the knees as well as from the feet. We're pressing the mat away, creating that space, tucking the tailbone under, and then just a little sort of dip of the hips down to the right and then to the left. So we pivot on our toes a little bit, we want to try and hit the center every time. You don't have to hit the floor. Or you don't have to touch the floor with your hips. It's quite nice to try and keep the shoulders a little bit steady. Maybe one more time to each side. Very good. And then coming into your child's pose. Relaxing everything that's made effort. Perhaps you're now aware a little bit more of the sides of the body. Just taking the opportunity to release anything with a sigh that feels like it should be let go of. And then when you're ready, coming into an upright position. So the next variation is a side plank. Um, and we have looked at side plank earlier in the term. <clears throat> and in addition to this video, I'm going to make a wall a video, which is all these same variations, pretty much, um, but using a wall instead of using the floor. Um, and you might find that that is a little bit more accessible for some of these postures, particularly side plank. But side plank can be done from the knees as well. So let's do it from the knees first. We're going to come to the knees and hands and knees first, and then just put the elbows down a little bit ahead of where the hands would normally go to, so that we can bring ourselves forward into a side plank, uh, sorry, into a plank plank. <laughs> and then I'm going to lift my uh, feet off the floor, take my right hand to the floor and left fingertips, and then just simply pivot onto the right outside of the leg, the right foot on the floor, lift the body away from the floor by pressing into the right forearm and then lift the left arm up. And here, we don't need to have a super straight line, but it's great if you've got one, but just making sure that you feel supported by the feet, the underside leg and the underside arm, in this case, the right one. So we can come back to center, just moving ourselves over our knees to come back into our plank pose, tucking the tailbone under, making space, and then doing the same thing to the other side. Left forearm stays down, right fingertips on the floor, and just helping to pivot the body to the left, taking the weight onto that left forearm, the left leg, and reaching the right arm up, maybe using a little bit of that action uh, between the shoulder blades. We're trying to create lift, 
We need to use our centered strength and then to come out, we're just coming back to center. And here we can rest on the belly and then try the full version with the feet up. So we've got the feet up, the knees up. Taking a couple of deep breaths. Often with strength poses, we hold a lot of ourselves in as we do them. And that's why the sighing out can be really useful um, after the practice. <sighs> because whilst in yoga, we talk a lot about this concept of letting go of things, that doesn't really mean very much to lots of people. Um, but the action of sighing out um, actually does let go of tension that we're holding without us needing to know specifically what it is or being that conscious of doing it. You might be conscious of the effects though, which is good. Okay, so final variations, I promise. Well, sort of. Um, final variations, we're going to do side plank, but with the legs extended. Again, if your knees down is a better option for you, then carry on with the knees down. I'm going to place the hands down onto the floor. Step the feet back, just find that long plank, pressing the body away, tucking the tailbone under. We have the feet apart to begin with. So we want them far enough apart that they can roll to the right side. So taking the weight onto the right forearm, just let the feet roll to the right, the heels to the right, and lifting the left arm up. Now, if it feels okay, you can use your left fingers for support and just step the left foot on top of the right so that you have a side plank, but on the feet. It's pretty hard to hold, but it's all good. We get there in the end. Coming back through center, establishing a nice centered plank, and then feet apart again, dropping the heels to the left, lifting the, uh, sorry, dropping the heels to the opposite side. And then if you wish to, one foot on top of the other, using your hand for support or not, and just creating space underneath the body, before coming back to your plank pose. And here, we're not going to come down to rest just yet. We're going to come onto our hands and knees and then take a downward facing dog. And downward dog helps us to ease out the back side of the body. So thinking about length in the structures that have caused, that have, sorry, contracted to provide strength. So we can do a little wiggle of the heels, a little wiggle of the chest, and the hips. And then we're going to step the feet quite far back and do a little waving vinyasa. Knees down or knees up, it doesn't matter. Drop your buttocks to your heels, press off your toes round through your spine. As your shoulders come over your hands, glide the shoulder blades down to open your chest in an up dog, soft in the elbows, but really firm in the body. And then bending through the knees to round the body in the opposite direction, come back to downward facing dog. Make some movements with the head, the hips, the shoulders. And then one more time, dropping hips to heels, pressing off the toes, rounding through the spine, finding your up dog. Nice and firm across the belly. You can move here too if you'd like to. Of course, bending the knees, coming back to your downward facing dog. A final little wiggle of the hands or the head. The hands, not the <laughs> head, not the hands, rather. Um, and then finding a child's pose or lying flat on your belly. Allow your forehead to find the floor or the back of your folded arms or hands. Turn your palms upwards if you're in child's pose. Give a little sway of the hips from side to side, whichever pose you're in. Take a few moments to soften everything that needs to be softened and see if there is a sigh when you take a deep breath in. Whenever you're ready, you can come into an upright position and just making yourself comfortable. If you need to, give yourself a little release. It's not uncommon for, for there to be a little bit of effort in the back of the neck and across the shoulders and the upper back when you're not used to practicing these postures in quite so much concentration or quite so um, you know, intense, intensely. Um, so feel free to give yourself a little wriggle, move the head and the neck in any way that feels good. 
move the shoulders as well. And throughout your day, you might like to do a little bit of releasing or even a little bit of stretching. A little bit of eagle arms is quite nice for stretching out that part of the body. You can lift and lower. You can do a little slinky sideways movement as well and do it both ways round to really get the uh, both sides of the body feeling. They don't have to ever be exactly the same, but it's just nice to observe the difference between one side and the other. So hopefully that feels good. Any more releasing you need to do, by all means, be led by your body and pay attention to it. And if you found this one just a little bit too challenging, then please check out the short video of wall practice and wall-based um, planks, which would be a great place to start to build up your strength. I look forward to seeing you again. Please like and subscribe. Namaste.